Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Dealer's Choice where we look back at those uh, little gaming gems of uh, history. I'm your host Chris, with me is Armadillo. Hello everybody. And today we are looking at a action platformer classic from the early 2000s, it's Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. Ah, oh, this, uh, this takes me back, you could say it takes me back in time. Hey! <laughs> I, think, I think I'm going to be making a lot of those jokes throughout the course of this video. Yeah, it's it, it does lend itself quite well, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You could also say it's a look back at time game up uh, whatever. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was I was waiting with bated breath. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just didn't happen. Yeah. Anyway, Prince of Persia, a landmark series of platformers. Some would call it a spiritual uh, ancestor to Assassin's Creed in terms of parkour and things like that. Absolutely, I would uh, definitely agree with that. Yeah, and I, I think it's fair to say that the Prince of Persia series in general is just a time-honored classic. Like even gamers who only got into the hobby in like the 2010s and so on will have heard of this. Yeah, absolutely. So a bit of uh, premises to the story of this game. Uh, you are a prince of Persia, surprise, surprise, mm -hmm. and uh, you and your father have engaged in a little bit of uh, light raiding on uh, a neighboring kingdom while on the way to somewhere else. I As you do. Like, uh, yeah, I don't quite get how that's meant to work. But um, yeah, your father obtains a massive hourglass full of some uh, magical sands, and uh, you obtain a dagger that that you completely by accident find out has uh, rewind powers to save you from death. What yep. eventually happens is that uh, an evil vizier, because it's always a vizier in these kinds of games, yep. ends up uh, tricking you into using the dagger to unlock the hourglass and letting forth the sands of time. So now your game-long mission is to undo what you have done, put the sands back in the hourglass, and uh, basically stay alive in the process. Yep. Um, yeah, so some other quick trivia as well that I found out is the voice actor for the prince is um, actually Yuri Lewenthal, who you will know as the voice of Mercury Black from Ruby and Neil from Camp Camp. You don't... What? You didn't know that? I did not know that! Really? <laughs> that is insane! Yuri Lewenthal is an extremely prolific voice actor who has done many and many amazing voices. He was also part of the Halo 2 ARG, I Love Beasts. I can't remember what his name was in it. I think it was Jason Morelli. Um, oh. But yeah, um, and he is also included uh, in Camp Camp as the lovable nerd Neil. Brilliant. Um, yeah. that, that, that trivia has blown my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, a bit of context as to where we are right now. Uh, we have just activated the uh, security system for this palace. Which turns out to be as big an issue for me as it is going to be for the sand monsters. It, it seems pretty ridiculously elaborate. Like yeah. I don't even think like I don't even think any medieval like levels of palace had these types of security of just traveling spikes. I, th I think this place was was focusing way more on the internal security than the external security. Which... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you would expect you'd be, they'd be trying to keep people out rather than uh, kill people once they got in. Yeah, I'll be honest, there are probably modern buildings to this day that don't have this kind of security. I mean, granted, there's a whole lot of legality associated with that, but obviously they didn't need to care about that. Yeah. Oh, look, how convenient that uh, the thing that you need to interact with is also the same logo of the game. Yeah, I always find that funny how uh, that, that is a trend across all three games. Whichever different logo they have, it is always the same as the logo on all switches and pressure plates <laughs> and, and everything like that. Yeah, that's always great. So I imagine this is probably for some timed door system or something. As oh, well, what do you know? demonstrated by the cutscene, yes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so some mechanics, like Prince of Persia itself, it really brought like some quite interesting mechanics to the 3D realm. Um, so like this, for example, of um, well, what you called as the precursor to Assassin's Creed Parkour via wall running and jumping and platforming. Yeah. Um, as well as as well as as the whole premise of the game, the time rewind system, which um, that has always been the thing about 3D platformers is where dying can be incredibly frustrating. Yes, and the thing is, 
while, while the puzzles are obviously challenging, they aren't so... The, the, the thing about Prince of Persia Sands of Time is that it's actually surprisingly easy, especially once you've played through it a couple of times. Yeah. And it's made even easier with the fact that, yes, with the uh, dagger of time at your side... Uh, oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I, 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 think, I think I just saw the prince's butt cheeks just absolutely clenching there. He's got slightly frayed uh, threads at the, <laughs> on yeah. the side of his leg now. And that fabric ain't cheap. But with the uh, Dagger of Time on your side, yeah, it, it just makes it even easier because you can obviously undo your mistakes quite easily. You don't have to worry about very specific timing and, you know, yeah, accuracy of with the cap Quick and so on. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so it seems like you're in the courtyard. Again, I'm seeing security systems, like, all over the place in this courtyard. It's like, how did they expect... Oh, no, nope, you seem like you've got teleporting knights now. Yeah, the nice th the nice thing about uh, the enemies is that they will just teleport to you. You don't you can't actually run away from them at any point. Yeah, so uh, so much for hor other horror games where your only move is the run move. Yeah. yeah. So the fun thing about the enemies here is that uh, while you can wail on them with your sword all day, they'll only actually disappear once you stab them with the dagger of time. I'll demonstrate here right now. You'll see uh, that guy there on the ground. He is technically, yep. for all intents and purposes, dead. And yet, there he is. He is coming back to life as we speak. Man, sand is... Um, I, I don't like sand. <laughs> it's coarse and it's rough. <laughs> and um, and they don't die for some weird reason as well. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I also noticed as well, when you um, essentially absorbed that sand zombie, um, your a little side meter um, increased. Yes, so you have limited uses of your uh, time dagger powers, as yeah. demonstrated by the, uh, the 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 moon crescents and the circles. Mm -hmm. The uh, circles refer to basically simple rewinding powers. So if you make a mistake, you go back and you can undo it and so on. Yeah. While the crescents refer to more combat based combat based powers, as I will now demonstrate. So I've stabbed him with the dagger. He is now frozen in time. Ah. Which means I can now do this. That's pretty amazing, and it completely disintegrated him. Yes, unfortunately that means you can't then regain his sand with the dagger, but, you know, it, yeah. in, in, in a pinch it, it is quite helpful. So it's quite interesting as well, because like, it gives you that ability for combat maneuvers, but then you have to think about the cost of that, in that you won't be able to regain your rewinds from it. Yeah. That's, uh, that's really cool, that. Um, I saw as well, I think, that you were like also, not only as you are demonstrating jumping over them to attack them from behind, but you're also jumping off walls as well? Yes, something about the prince, he has like practically superhuman acrobatic powers. <laughs> so he's a so he's a Persian Nightwing, is what you're saying? Basically. Yeah, and you just got absolutely sliced by that glaive. Well see, that's the thing, the enemies aren't aren't very uh, fast when it comes to attacking you. Yeah. But the thing is, they don't need to be, because if they if you manage to let them hit you, they will take a fair chunk of your health off. Yeah. Well, I guess that kind of incentivizes the use of you being able to beat one time. And also just the insane man amount of moves you can do, because like none of these guys are acrobatic enough to be pulling the shit I am. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. Um, I think from what I remember as well, um, playing this game, was that over the course of the game, you see the prince's character model get progressively messed up. Yeah, his sleeves start coming off. I think by the end, by the like last quarter of the game, his tops come off. And yeah, he's obviously quite scarred and hunky, as you might expect. Yeah, and obviously it's just an excuse to get shirtless. But wait, what? What? <laughs> no, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, the only other game that I even remember vaguely doing that kind of thing, well, actually two other types of games, was um, the Arkham series and Spec Ops Online. Where, like, as you go along, your character just gets more and more war-torn. Like, I know, yes. like, you'll see holes in Batman's cave and scratches all over his armor. And, you know, the prince apparently is photosynthetic, because all he needs to do is just drink water and he's all fine. Well, you know, it's the natural counter to sand, obviously. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> oh my yeah. god, I actually didn't realize that all this time. Is that the reason why they chose water as the healing mechanic? God, I'm dumb. It, it actually has a surprising amount of symbolism throughout most of the series, I think, especially in the second game. Yeah. Well, I would imagine as well, desert water being a valuable thing. Yeah, exactly. 
So I just want to take a moment here to highlight something that's probably, one of, I think, one of my favourite points about the Prince of Persia series as a whole. Look at the environments! They're so pretty! It is quite beautiful, actually, looking at that lush green. Um, it really, like, shows that sense of scale as well that's associated with this courtyard. Like, it's not so ridiculous that a Persian king couldn't do this. Yeah. And the thing well, is, the, yeah. all the all the environments are really vibrant, really colourful. Obviously, this is a bit yeah. of a bad example because it's the middle of the night, as you can I'm, see. By I'm, the I'm serious though. If you like, moon. I swear, like if you keep that first person view long enough, you'll probably just hear Arabian night. <laughs> 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 well, that kind of that kind of links into what I was going to say next was that the soundtrack manages to capture an Arabian feel, albeit with a slight uh, metal vibe as well. Yeah, I, I always found that uh, quite cool as well. Again, like, okay, so when the king installed the security system, did you just expect people to be able to jump up? I mean, it, 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 that, that is something that you try, I guess you try not to think about during the various different <laughs> rooms and areas that you go into. It's just, yes, yeah. was this installed on purpose? <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, how convenient that the only person who could even remotely, like, activate the security features is my own acrobatic son. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it, it makes you think now was the kick okay wow okay that's um that's pretty elaborate. yeah pre pretty insane security <laughs> yeah <laughs> mate i would love to know who is the security architect for this palace because that would just be like th any building would be like impenetrable and the, and the thing is that he, he probably got paid a hell of a lot for all of it since this is yeah. all over the place yeah exactly <laughs> It's like, I don't even know how it's powered, you don't even know how, like, or anything like that. Oh no, it's powered It's powered by light of some kind. Whenever you end up activating some kind of mechanism, there's some kind of weird-sounding white light refractive mirror shit involved there somewhere. <laughs> Alright, so apparently uh, the Persians discovered solar power long before anyone else did. Especially a certain uh, solar queen from uh, Sky Factory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Ah, yes, so, uh, Neil from Cam Cam showing off his Olympic skills. Degree of difficulty, 5.3. Yep. <laughs> the thing is, the athletic skills of, of this prince, like, it's the other main appeal in this game, is that it all he flows so smoothly. Like, you would expect mm. with the number of things he can do, like running up walls, running along walls, all that kind of stuff, it yeah. all chains together really well. It makes you wonder why Ezio couldn't do this when all he wanted him to do was jump in a bale of hay. <laughs> oh, the amount of times, oh. the amount of times I've died jumping off high buildings in completely in the opposite direction over where that fucking bale of hay was. Ugh, so <laughs> frustrating. You can tell that clearly the uh, clearly they went overboard with the superhuman aspect for this guy, whereas they obviously they had to tone down for realism in the Assassin's Creed series. Yes, they couldn't teach Ezio what straight meant. Yeah, well, I mean, he's Italian. I, I'm sure yeah. there's a joke in there somewhere. Probably. <laughs> uh, oh, this is quite interesting. I think I remember this. Yeah, special, uh, as you will see, hallucinogenic fountains. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Whoa, that's uh, that's that's really pretty. So what? There was just some secret hallway into this room that apparently leads from nowhere to nowhere. Well, the thing is, there's a lot of these scattered throughout the game, and it's never really clear whether they're real or if they're figments of the prince's imagination. I mean, with all the trauma that he's probably just experienced now, I mean, I would not be surprised at all. That yeah, it's perfect. It's a perfectly valid concern. Yeah. So. Uh, some hallucinogenic water. Just give me a second. Mate, that's more than hallucinogenic. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, that that's like I think I think there was more than just LSD in that water. <laughs> Let's be honest here. Well, well, given that increases his uh, his life bar, whatever it is, I want some of it. <laughs> and makes his eyes completely blue. Yeah, and that's guess what? The hole the hole to get there isn't there anymore. <laughs> Huh. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting it down to hall the hallucinations. Yep, there you go. <laughs> so, so, so I guess the prince is so powerful that he can just think that he's gaining more health. Again, trauma. He's he's clearly gaining <laughs> some form of strength from what he's going through. 
I don't think we're accurately demonstrating how trauma works in this game. <laughs> <laughs> Other than the whole uh, losing clothes aspect, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, all right, yeah, you know that's pretty standard. Uh, saw blades on walls. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Us gamers haven't seen before, right? <laughs> no, no, not at all. I mean, we've all played platformers enough to basically expect this. Oh no! Oh, fuck! <laughs> Rewind! <laughs> yep, you know, <laughs> let's just undo that mistake. You see, it's really good as well, because then you don't need to really necessarily wait on loading times or anything, unless, of course, if that tank ran out. Exactly, but the thing is, even then, it doesn't set you back that much if you die, if you, like, have a proper death and game over. Mm. It will just set you back a short distance, so you, yeah. it, it, it is quite forgiving. Yeah. That's something I do cool. find something I do find funny is that uh, eventually uh, you'll we, we meet up with another survivor called uh, Farah who's a princess. Who, it turns out the daughter of the uh, guy we stole the dagger from. Ah, uh, you know, because you know interpersonal relations uh, always work like that. Yeah, and uh, she basically acts as a companion and uh, fellow fighter for a hefty chunk of the game. Mm. And there are a couple of points where if you uh, use the dagger around her. Mm. Uh, she will. She will make some kind of comment along the lines of, "I feel like I'm living. I've lived through this moment before." That's really cool. That <laughs> uh, the fact that um, the actions that you do like affect them via speech as well. Yeah. Like they actually try and like talk about what you just did. That's always pretty cool as well. Just waiting for the saw blade. Yep. <clears throat> Again, I don't think there are many games nowadays that are doing time manipulation aspects. Yeah, that, that, that does seem to be a bit more of an older thing. Wasn't there a... I can't remember what it was called, but wasn't there a game where you like played as a, played as a cat that had like a time vacuum or something? Blinks the Time Sweeper. Yeah, Time Sweeper. That was I heard it. that was an absolute classic on the original Xbox, although granted I never played it. But yeah, that apparently had similar kind of time manipulation powers as well. Yeah, so. that and I think Singularity, I think, was another game. Uh, that was on the 360. Yeah. Oh yeah, Singularity. I haven't, oh, I haven't mm. thought about that for a long time. Yeah, I think I still remember videos of um, Michael from Rooster Teeth raging over that because of some, like, ticks or something. Yeah. So here we are in another uh, timed platforming bit. So as soon yep. as I let the lever go, the, the door's going to be on a timer. Yeah. So just need to get through. It's great as well traps. that like if you like mess up a little bit and you want to start over, you don't have to wait for the whole thing to go down. You can just pull the lever as much as. Okay, look. For ser seriously, what kind of security system is this? <laughs> seriously, who 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 in their right mind would genuinely expect to run up a wall to then jump onto a platform? The more important thing is the sand zombies don't do it. So this really is just inconveniencing me. <laughs> Right, so in that case, then, this is just the best security system ever. Yeah. I'll take it, fine. Indy Jones, go! <laughs> hey, nice. Ah, so yes, that, so... That's Farrah there with a the bow and arrow. Oh, I thought, oh, sorry, I thought Farrah was on the right. <laughs> 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 Alright, oh, yep. Because, you know, you can just run down walls like that, like a proper gymnast. Again, I, I could, I, again I'm nitpicking here, but... I, I mean, I should say that this game is one that's amazing. Even the character models as well. I mean, not the sand zombies, because they're sand zombies. But, yeah. like, the prince's facial expressions and the modelling that was associated with that was really well done. Yes. It's like, I think I remember in some cutscene, he, like, jumps, like, mass... He, like, runs up a pillar, jumps up, and then makes, like, a massive, like, 20-metre jump. On top of like a pillar, another pillar or something. Oh, you got sliced. Oh, nice. Damn it. And, oh, um, oh, yep. wow. oh, oh, God. Ah. Oh, 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 God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to recover from that with just a simple rewind. I think I, I might... don't know, man. You might give it a try. Nah, give it a I'm try. Not... Oh, and you've run out of time. Yeah, I've run out of time, right? I think I'm, I think I'm just going to restart that one again. That was a bit <laughs> of a mess. <laughs> Mate, that is definitely not what happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the that's the other nice thing. The prince uh, does is narrating this to the player while it's all happening, so you can manage yeah. to get his his post commentary, uh, including some uh, self deprecation and uh, telling him to stop <laughs> talking to himself. Yeah, uh, that's great. 
Also, yeah, something something quick to point out. That is my dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I figured. Um, I figured there was some kind of uh, tough love going on when he was just absolutely wailing on you with that massive sword. Scimitar, I think it is. A a approval issues, let's say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, most definitely. Uh, th I think that's what we can put it down to. And yeah, he just oh. took out one of his own guys, so I'm not complaining. I mean, you know, I imagine friendly fire was still an issue back then. Well, friendly fire is an issue with Pharaoh, as you might have noticed. She's got a bow and arrow, and she is and she's pretty good with it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it is also entirely possible for her to accidentally hit you. Although she does. I've never had that in all the time I've played this. I never had that issue. I don't know what that. I don't know what kind of comment you're trying to make about my ability to play this game. Out of time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I'm not saying anything. Just apart from the fact that you're getting sliced in the back. The thing, uh, to give her credit though, she does apologize if she shoots you. So you know, at least she, at least you know she's not uh, being malicious about it. Uh, yeah, you know, you know. It's oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry that your internal organs are spewing out. It was completely by accident. Is is it is this? Do you think this is the prime reason why I think? Do you think this was like Ubisoft's design choice? Was that they imagined you just go through the game and they were originally just going to make it sand zombies, but because of the fact that Pharaoh would sometimes shoot with an arrow, it's like. Okay, well, that's a bit unfair for the player. And then someone came up with the idea of what about we give him a dagger that turns back time? Do you think that's the <laughs> whole entire premise? <laughs> that the only reason why they ever had the Sands of Time, the Dagger of Time, everything was because of Farrah's friendly fire incidents. I mean, given given that apparently you never had that kind of issue, I'm not sure how well, I'm, I'm not sure if they were actually that successful that was in the pretty original amazing. premise in that case. That uh, that move right there was uh, pretty badass and spectacular. Again, Prince Athletic Ability. Superhuman. I don't, I'm not entirely sure how easy it would be to launch yourself off a wall Seriously, if this guy in a existed, straight line. If this guy existed for 2012, <laughs> he would absolutely wreck the gymnastics. Yeah, he would. See, the thing is, again, like... Something to hit on with this game is that while it, it can be obviously challenging, I, like I had to uh, restart because of dying yeah. and so on, It in the end, it can be quite easy. Hmm. Like, with a bit of experience and, you know, just a bit of practice, I guess, yeah. you could quite easily bust out enough moves that you could quite easily win any fight or get mm. past any puzzle in the game. Yeah, of course. But the thing is, but that's still, but it's still fun, despite being easy. Mm. I think because it's it's just that accessible to everyone, because it, it's easy enough that anyone could pick it up. Yeah, that and I think as well, just like the kind of story that's associated with it as well. Because it's like... Obviously, the whole game starts as being like, "Oh, hey, I'm I am the honor and glory man. I am going to go and uh, be the noble warrior." And then you accidentally cause the worst party ever known to man. Yeah. And then it's up to you to fix it. It shows that kind of like quest for redemption style kind of story, which I really enjoy. It is, yeah. That kind of thing is always is always prime story fair and, and adventure fair, I guess. Yeah. As, as well, not to mention all of the Aladdin overtones. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like, like the, le, le, let's not kid ourselves here. Come on, a manipulating vizier? Yeah, it, well, I mean, to be fair, it's always a vizier. Like, I feel like even in the original Arabian Nights tales, so many times, it's always the vizier who's the villain. Yeah, because he's always, like, the behind-the-scenes, pragmatic kind of individual. Yeah. Oh, there you go, now you're uh, just sparring with your father right there. Yeah, unfortunately, it takes a while to kill him because he blocks everything until you manage to get like an eight attack chain in there. Although you can also just vault over him and then just keep doing, repeating this until eventually he goes down. <laughs> Cheesing the father. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. Well, I mean, like father, like son, right? Because since he's just blocking everything. Okay, <laughs> he is now down. Ugh. I am can sorry, you father. It? You must now. You must now be gone. You can now, I guess, kind of say that your father is inside of... Well, I was going to say inside of you, but that doesn't really work, does it? It's inside your weapon. <laughs> there you go, yeah. He, he lives on in my sword, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is not my and, you know, he seems pretty happy just about the fact that he just murdered his own father. Yeah. Also, in case you didn't notice, his sleeve is a bit torn now, so we are, yeah. we are, we are seeing progress in the uh, character development of uh, damage. Yep. And uh, showing the next bit of what's about to happen. 
You know, just from that concept alone, I think it would be really cool if Prince of Persia was, like, this plot of The Sands of Time was a TV show. Like, I could so imagine Netflix doing this with, like, having the flashbacks as, like, previously or a coming up style uh, kind of thing. That would actually work quite well, unfortunately. I can't remember which studio it was, but I feel like The Sands of Time uh, is copyrighted to that uh, film that is a bit unfortunate <sighs> that, was, that, that was back in, like, what, 2010, 2011? We do not talk about that film. Yeah, it's a shame for Jay Gyllenhaal. I normally like his stuff, but yeah, that was yeah. not one of his best, his better pieces. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So, hopefully, uh, you have enjoyed this uh, glimpse of the game. It's worth. Uh, it's quite cheap on Steam at the moment. I will say, the uh, PC port controls are a little bit take a little bit of getting used to, but it's worth getting. I think. Just yes, if only to relive, to re in order to relive a classic bit of nostalgia, which is, which is as we've seen, very fluid, very smooth, easy, accessible, and absolutely beautiful. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that about uh, wraps it up for this episode of Dealer's Choice. We hope you all enjoyed watching, and uh, we shall yep. see you again soon for another peek in the past. Yep, uh, we will uh, all see you then. And uh, shout out to Yuri the Wentful. Yes, yep. you're awesome, dude. <laughs> yep. See you, everybody. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. That's not what happened. <laughs>